Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jensen with CCJ3701, Research Methods in Criminology. So we're going to walk through the pieces of a logistic regression model table. So you know how to put all your stuff from SPSS in there. Okay, so just as a brief walkthrough, it's very similar to the linear regression table. Just has a little bit different kinds of information, but otherwise it's all very, very much the same. So on the left, you actually stack your variables that you're testing. The independent, the main independent goes on top, and then you list your uh, control variables underneath. And then you're going to be running each of these, adding one or two at a time in several models. This is called nested modeling where we start adding one at a time each of the variables to see how they change things and if the result changes overall. Sometimes these variables have effects on each other we call interactions and it's kind of interesting to see that. But let's generate some output first so you can see kind of how it magically goes into the table. Okay, so I'm going to actually go to analyze, regression, and then binary logistic regression. I'm going to grab my um, dependent variable. Um, I'll just call that having sex with an acquaintance last year. <laughs> it's kind of a yes, no question. So that's a good dependent variable. And then I'm going to actually add um, age in as an independent variable. Okay. So again, you don't really have to ask for any options here. Everything's kind of built in the way we need it. So you can just click continue and click OK. All right. So remember, you always get lots of output in logistic regression. Uh, you get your case processing summary, which shows you your N, how many cases you're analyzing. And of course, your N goes right here at the bottom. Okay, there's a whole row of Ns for every model. Okay, and generally speaking, those Ns get a little bit smaller the more variables you put into the equation. Okay, because you're requiring people to answer more and more questions from an interview or a survey. So that's where you get that number, how many cases are included in the analysis. Um, then you get a whole bunch of stuff kind of looks like a chi-square variables in the equation variables not in the equation okay uh, then you finally get a model summary this is where you get your nagel kirky r squared 0 0.029 that's where that would go in this table so you see it says nagel kirky pseudo r squared that's where that number goes okay for the model and then down here you go all the way to this area at the bottom that says variables in the equation and it says a constant and age of respondent and uh, the exponential b's and the significance levels. Okay, so um, your constant goes right above the nagel kirky value here in the table. Constant doesn't mean a whole lot just because of the kind of analyses you're doing in a logistic regression. We report it anyway just for references, but you don't actually have to interpret it. Okay, what we're most concerned about are those odds ratios. So let's look at the odds ratio. Right here, the odds ratio is here on the right, it's also called an exponential b or an exponent of the b coefficient. Remember in logistic regression, you're actually predicting likelihoods of things occurring or not occurring. And so we don't use the regular b, we use the exponent of the b because the data have been logarithmed to make sure you can make predictions of the variance when there's very little variance to predict. Remember, you only have like a yes, no, uh, very limited answers on that dependent variable. Okay, so uh, that's why we make predictions of likelihoods of being in that category. And so it's a little different than linear. So this 1.024, that is the odds ratio or the exponential B. And that would go here in the table. And then we'd have to put stars next to it again, according to how significant it is. Okay, remember with significance levels, you look at, um, you know, if it's at that level or lower. Okay. So in this equation, we got a, zero, a 0 0.012. That's a nice low level for the age of the respondent predicting um, whether they had sex with an acquaintance last year, yes or no, okay? Um, that is a significant value. Anything less than 0 0.05 is significant. But at what level is it significant? Let's go ahead and look at the table. How many stars would it get? Would it get three stars, two stars, or one star? for 0 0.012. This one's kind of tricky. It's definitely smaller. So one one hundredth of, of for their p-value is definitely smaller than five one hundredths of a p-value. Uh, but it's a 0 0.012 is slightly larger than that 0 0.01. Um, again, some people round it and cut off the, the third decimal place and just call it p is less than 0 0.01. 
and give it two stars. Other people are being conservative and they just kind of say, well, let's just do 0.05 just to be safe since that is a little larger for that level. So again, it has to be that number or less, okay? And it's gotta be either between or within these levels. Um, the more zeros, the better. We love that because then it's highly statistically significant. 99% chance that it is true, okay? So this is like the probability that it's false. 5% chance of being false, 1% uh, chance, and a less than 1% chance of being false. That's essentially what these are. So if you need help interpreting significance levels, just let me know. I can help you with that. Um, but just talk through, you know, do I have something that is 0 0.04? So it's 0 0.04, 4 one hundredths is bigger than 5 one hundredths, but smaller than 1 one hundredth. So I can only give it one star. So that's kind of how you got to think through it. Okay. So this one would actually, um, if you're being conservative, just get one star. Um, if you want to be kind of, you know, a little more go-getter, I guess you could give it two stars. But how would we interpret this, this point, 1.024? Okay. Um, what does that actually mean in the equation? Well, 1.024 literally means that you are 0.024 or 2% more likely to have sex with an acquaintance in the last year with every year that you age. The older you get, the, the more likely that is. But it's only a tiny bit. It's like 2% more likely to do that. The, you know, or, you, or your likelihood goes up just barely. It's not very much, but it does increase. So you could write something about that. Okay, but essentially, those are the only things you have to report in this table. Constant, nagel kirky r squared, the n, and the odds ratio. And then you just star those odds ratio with the ones that are significant and the ones that are not. Let's try throwing one more variable in the equation so you can start to see how they go. If I go to regression, binary logistic, it's going to keep the same stuff I had in here before. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put um, another variable in here. We can select, um, put a one that's in here. Um, let's see, use computer at work. Okay. <laughs> Um, work computer. So we put those in there. We click OK. Again, you're going to get a new set of logistic regressions. Scroll all the way down. Now you see here variables in the equation. I have my work, use a computer at work variable. I have my age variable in there again. So you're going to be reporting those two exponential b's here on the right, whether they are significant. Turns out this one is not, um, but you would report that in model two. So that's your second model. When you add some more variables, you look and see how things change, you report all this information again. And so it's easier to just fill out your table, work model by model, get everything populated, and then you can put SPSS away, you can stop scrolling through output, and literally just look through these values and write up your results. It's a little bit easier to do this than trying to find everything in the output because you just get a lot of stuff in the output. So these are the things we interpret, and this is how you populate a table. Um, again, I just like kind of working column by column, adding more and more variables in and s reporting each of the changes as they go. So if you have any questions, let me know. But logistic regression tables are pretty straightforward and they should populate relatively easy. Good luck.